Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to my YouTube chess channel, Justin Gagno. Um, you can find me on uh, YouTube, Justin Gagno Chess. Also on Lee Chess, type in my name, add me to the friends list and let's play some chess. All right, so I was playing some chess with my friend Smash Divine uh, yesterday and going through the games, um, there was a couple games that I thought were noteworthy. Um, I found one in particular that really illustrated uh, attack and defense um, and the resilience of Smash Divine's play in terms of uh, kind of mm, withholding his intent of where he wants to play, what he wants to do, and also about me uh, trying not to overplay my position. Um, sometimes I tend to overplay my hand when I have a good position. I tend to push the pawns too far or I tend to uh, attack a little bit too much when I need to play a little bit more solid, a little bit more uh, positional moves. Um, so let's just go through the game. Uh, it'll be a short analysis, um, but let's uh, have a look, okay? So the game uh, started off with d4. Um, I start with d4, e4, c4, knight f3. Lots of, uh, lots of first move choices. Uh, so he goes for a modern defense, g6, aiming to put the bishop into a fiend cattle position. e4, bishop g7, knight c3, d6. All right, so we've kind of reached a modern um, defense setup and could all very well go into a perk or the pierce defense, but let's have a look. All right, so I go with f4, kind of creating this wall of pawns. Um, but I'm kind of lacking piece development, so I need be, I need to be a little bit careful of falling behind in terms of uh, piece development. Excuse me. So I didn't know this, but this is classified as the modern defense pseudo-Austrian attack. I've always just called it the Austrian attack, but maybe because the knight's not on f6, it's called the pseudo-Austrian attack. Okay. Knight d7. So now if we look at the evaluation in this position, because I'm not familiar with knight d7 being really a strong move. If we look at the evaluation, it, I'm not really that far ahead. It, it gives me uh, a plus 0 0.7, which is pretty normal for white. Um, so it's really nothing to write home about. So knight d7, even though it looks like an odd move, it doesn't seem to be that bad. Um, yeah. So let's turn off the analysis. We'll we'll turn it on and off and kind of see where gauged where the game is at. Knight f3, h6. Another inter interesting move um, by Smash Divine. N normally um, you would see knight f6 here, um, maybe a6, maybe e6, but he goes for this uh, h6. So as you can see, he's kind of playing um, this almost like a hippopotamus structure where he's keeping all of his pawns. Uh, a one step back, keeping his pieces back, and he's kind of giving me the center for free. So, which is uh, interesting in terms of me having control over the center, but not uh, trying not to overplay it, pushing too many pawns, and then, uh, if, like I said, I, I would fall behind in development, or my pawns would become a weakness. Um, sometimes pawns that are over pushed uh, create holes, and then, uh, yeah, then you have problems. All right, let's keep on going. Bishop c4. Now for this move, <clears throat> I wasn't sure if I wanted to put my bishop on c4 or on maybe d3 or maybe even leave it on f1 and play bishop uh, e3 instead. But I chose c4. It, it seemed fairly natural to attack f7 here. e6, blunting the bishop. Queen e2, starting to get ready to castle on which side kind of uh who knows i'm a little bit of a a little bit of a guessing game for him uh here you want to you always want to give your opponents um you want to always want to give them questions you want to ask them questions so they can kind of not really understand what you're doing too well if your opponent understands what you're doing um if it's a little bit too upfront uh it's pretty easy to stop so Sometimes it's um, a little bit better to be less revealing about 
uh, your true intentions in, in your games. Or that's what at least I find when I play chess. I could be completely wrong about that, but from from my um, experience, uh, it's kind of like poker sometimes, where you don't want to reveal your your hand or or the the strength of your hand too too early on. <clears throat> if I could compare it to another game, but poker is has a large luck component, and I don't think there's really any luck in chess. Or if there is, let me know that I'm I'm unaware of. Okay, knight e7 by him, bishop d2. So it looks like he could get ready to castle here. But if he were to castle, he would be kind of castling into already like a ready-made pawn storm. So maybe just a developed move. And then you can see how he has this um, hippopotamus structure. Sometimes in the hippopotamus structure, you get a6 and b6 as well with a, with a double fianchetto system. So... All right, let's continue. Knight b6. So I maintain the pressure on the e6 and f7 uh, squares, uh, controlling this diagonal. I did consider uh, going to d3 instead. Um, and that way, if I were to ever play an e5 push, the bishop would kind of exert some pressure on g6. Um, and also, it would control over here. But... I also felt like this move was reasonable, still controlling um, <clears throat> this diagonal. Bishop d7, h3. So here I was tempted to play h4, uh, just to kind of stop any g5 ideas. But I kind of played it safe and I said, you know what, I'll go h3, g4 if needed. And I felt pretty comfortable about that option. So that's kind of why I went with that. Um, let's do an evaluation check, guys. So in terms of the evaluation, so I'm at about I'm at about plus one, <clears throat> which is showing a I've gained some kind of initiative or advantage. It's still kind of small for white. Um, and this is also illustrating that um, Smash Divine's moves may look quite unorthodox. But in terms of the the engine's reading, it's not that bad for Black. Yes, Black is a little bit cramped. Black has to work out his coordination of his pieces, but it, he seems to be doing a, a decent job of it. And I'm not plus five, so he hasn't clearly blundered, but I am... Okay, it's showing about a plus 1.5 here, so it shows that I'm ahead. I'm kind of pulling away from um, the initiative of, of uh, the first move advantage, but... Not as really as much as you would think with um, just looking at the position with my pawns in the center. My pieces look nicely placed. Um, so, yeah, something to think about. Okay, I go h3, c6. Okay, all of his pawns are staying back. He hasn't even committed a pawn to, uh, <clears throat> to any of the fifth squares yet. Like d5, e5, c5. So he's not willing to show his hand quite yet of what he wants to do. So he's kind of hiding his intentions from me. Or that's what I feel. I feel like his, he's saying, I don't want you to know what I'm doing quite yet. I want you to commit your yourself first uh, in terms of casting le uh, kingside or queenside. I almost said left or right. <laughs> and then after I kind of commit, then he might show his hand. That's kind of my feeling. All right. Let's turn off the engine again. We don't really need the engine for every move. Just kind of down uh, every so often. I'll turn it on and we'll see how it evaluates. G4. Okay. I've made quite a bit of pawn moves here. I have a lot of space. Uh, he has space as well, but just more in a more in a cramped defensive way. So I went queenside here. And he goes queenside as well e5. So I went for this pawn push. Um, I thought it would give my knight a good square here. And I thought it was time to ask him a question. Excuse me. So, um, yeah, I just drank a smoothie. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit full. <laughs> so yeah, so I like to ask my opponents lots of questions. 
Um, that's the way I like to play chess. I like to give them options of what to do. And uh, the more options you give them, the more the greater chance they, they'll choose the wrong path or the wrong choice. And it could lead to uh, uh, have some good, uh, great benefits for your position. So, so king b8. I take on d6. Queen takes d6. So here, when we look at the position, I feel pretty good about my position here. My central space seems to be paying off. I've freed up a e4 for a nice to get lodged in there. Um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about my position. Um, let's check the analysis to see what the engine's thinking. Okay, so I was at a 1.5 advantage now, or um, not necessarily an advantage, but plus 1.5. Now this puts me at about a two, which is showing um, that I'm really starting to pull away here with my moves. Um, and now the computer is recommending um, knight e5 and knight e4. Knight e4 looks good attacking the queen, and knight e5 looks good as well. Um, kind of wedging in myself in here, threatening this triple fork. So I played bishop e3. Now the analysis is on, so it shows that bishop e3 uh just gave away pretty much all of the advantage i have from this one move so it really shows you how resilient chess is and how uh defensive chess is a way to play chess as well there's been notable uh grandmasters who've played quite defensively or uh counter attack positional chess uh karpov uh petrosian uh players like that they've the different style of players so it shows you that um you can give up a, a small advantage with one move like that. So so the computer definitely liked a different move there. Um, but I went with bishop e3. Um, I was just to protect my pawn and open up my rook, to be honest. And I always felt like I had this anyways, these two moves. Let's continue. Turn off the analysis. We'll only leave it. We'll only turn it on every now and then, as I mentioned. Okay, knight e to c8. He's trying to untangle his pieces. Knight e5. So I've kind of achieved what I've wanted. I got my knight into e5, and honestly, this is the... Um, getting my knight into e5 was what I wanted from move maybe 5 or 6 when the game started. My I often find once you get a knight in onto e5 in um, uh, perk defenses, uh, modern defenses, it that it's really hard for black to dislodge um, or it comes at a, some kind of negative cost to black. So right now, when I got my knight there, I felt like, okay, I've achieved what I wanted, um, and I feel pretty good about my position. I don't think it's uh, winning, um, but I am starting to create some threats here. So what that triple fork threat that we're talking about, I am creating threats, and the way I like to play chess is to create threats and have, your, have the opponent respond to them. And as I mentioned, the more threats you create, the greater chance um, your opponent will falter. <clears throat> Queen e7, stopping the fork. King b1, kind of like a safety move, a waiting move. Um, some people would call it a nothing move. I'm not sure if that fits this description in this particular case. Knight d6, starting to create some of his own ideas maybe come in here uh, some kind of future future plan uh, but not right away bishop e3 kind of a waiting move as well opening up the queen okay g5 bishop g3 king a8 interesting move rook f rook hf1 Rook g8, queen f2, f5. Okay, so there was a lot of shuffling of the pieces going around here. The bishop got shuffled, the queen, the rook slid over. He moved his uh, king over to the corner. Um, I would say this is maybe due to the time pressure in the game. Uh, this was a three-minute game plus a, a two-second two increment. Uh, so we're kind of 
you know, trying to get our pieces to good squares. Um, also trying to not lose on time and uh, try to manage our time. Uh, time management is a big thing uh, in chess, especially for me. I've had uh, major issues in the past with uh, uh, time uh, management. It's something I've been working on um, for a while, but still need. I still have a long way to go. All right, let's continue. F takes g5, h takes g5, f takes f5, e takes f5. All right, a bunch of exchanges. The position has opened up. And here, um, Black blundered uh, his rook. And uh, I guess he missed that the rook was hanging. However, being a three minute game, which is quite fast, um, I didn't see it. So instead I played rook uh, e1. And this seems like a very logical move. Um, I like to put rooks in front of kings and in front of queens. And so that's what I did. And uh, in, in terms of the evaluation, let's check to see how bad of a reply that was. Uh, rook e1 into there. So right now I'm at a plus 5 if I, if I take the rook. But let's see how the evalu evaluation goes down. So I played rook to e1, right? Rook d e1. So the evaluation dropped quite um, dramatically. It dropped by 3.5, 3.8 here, so it shows that, um, yeah, well, I, I guess I did blunder that. Um, not necessarily blundered a piece, but I definitely squandered uh, an opportunity to grab the rook. All right, let's continue. But I thought the rook uh, in front of the queen was a, a fair, decent move. Um, I, after I saw that the rook was hanging, I felt I wasn't any worse. I wasn't uh, in a negative uh, score. I felt like I was still positive. All right. Let's turn off the evaluation, but it says I am plus 4.5 here. Knight takes, pawn takes, and now I take the rook. Yep, so the evaluation is back up 3.5. So I kind of uh, redeem myself for taking the rook uh, two moves later. But yeah, definitely... Uh, Definitely a, a missed opportunity on my part. Um, yep. Rook takes g8. All right, let's continue. Rook takes. Knight d5. Double the rooks. Queen d8. Queen f7. Bishop h3. Knight c4. And now bishop g2. All right, so this is a very pivotal point in the game. I was pretty low on time. In fact, if you look at the bottom, I had uh, 12 seconds. Now, I was looking at the board and I thought I saw something, but with the 12 seconds left, I I just, it was just like, I didn't want to invest uh, an extra five or 10 seconds and lose on time. So I felt like I was already kind of winning on the board or, or doing very well that, um, because what I was looking at was sacking my queen here. And then queen takes back and then rook, excuse me, and the rook e8. And if you look at it, it does work. And um, yeah, the engine says mate in, mate in eight. So yep, starts with queen takes g8. And here it's not even re re recommending the queen takes back because it'll probably reduce it to a mate in three. Um, so definitely another missed opportunity by me, but something that I saw but couldn't in time pressure, mm, I was a little bit hesitant, but looking at the position now, it's it's quite clear. Queen takes, queen takes, uh, assuming he would do that, and then rook goes down, and then then there would be a mating, uh, a, mate, a mate there. But um, yeah, you know, that's how it goes with uh, speed chess sometimes. All right. And so I played rook uh, e1 to e2, which is a blunder, clearly. And then he took my rook. Rook, rook takes e4. Rook f8. And then it, I, it appears he just blundered his bishop. I, maybe he thought he had some kind of uh, back rank mate here, but um, it's just not so with the bishop and the 
and the rook here it's just not it's just not there <clears throat> keep in mind look he he had 10 seconds and i'm at 14 so we we are definitely very close to living off the increment um yeah so i take he checks rook goes back takes takes queen now the queen is on the bishop and thankfully i'm able to block this with my queen let's turn on the evaluation one more time guys yep plus i'm at a plus eight so clearly winning there should be no way i should lose this position um and i, I don't lose it but i still have to find i still have to find the right moves and with time pressure you know it's a whole different ball game um tell me guys how many of you guys have played with clocks before and how do you find that how the, the feeling of playing with a clock com compared to just playing uh, with out time? So you're, essentially your time is infinite. You can take as long as you like uh, to move. But personally, when I play with a clock, you can it adds that other aspect uh, to the game of chess where you can really feel um, time is at hand and you really have to manage your time. It's just a whole nother level of chess that is really uh, interesting and uh, it's quite beautiful. All right, speaking of beautiful, queen e5. Okay, so I just block it directly, and that seems to be um, a, a decent approach. I'm still at plus six. Let's turn off the analysis. We we don't need it. Okay, just giving some, making a luft for my king, some space. I'm just going to blast out a couple of these moves, guys. Okay, queens come off the board, minor pieces come off the board, and now I'm just up a minor. He's got a he's got a pass pawn. I have one, but I'm just this is pretty um, elementary stuff, so very basic. Uh, my bishop is just controlling here, and uh, I think uh, resignation is uh, on the horizon. And black is also zugzwang because now the king will have to either go here or here and then he'll have to give up the pawn. So guys, that was the game. Um, one of the notable games with that Smash Divine where I thought attack and defense were um, very creative on both uh, sides of us. Uh, on his uh, uh, side and, and his side and my side that we both had a different way of playing chess and we were kind of arriving... Um, at moves in a creative way but in a different way i was trying to attack and and push things forward while he was trying to kind of almost like ball up and kind of um uh play very defensive and getting ready to strike in a more of an, a counter attack fashion kind of like an uh as i mentioned uh there was karpov who's known to play extremely solid positional uh petrosian as well um kind of this more counter attacking solid chess um yeah, so that was the game. Um, let's just go in just about a couple of moves in. Okay, guys? Uh, excuse me. There we go. We'll go about this far in, okay? So you can already see from five moves into the game, uh, white has established a great pawn center. Uh, the knights are on very natural squares. Um, and black is deciding... You can have the center. It's all yours. I'm going to play the game uh, with keeping my pieces back. And Black is hoping that maybe I'll overextend my pawns, kind of push in too far. And because um, when you push in too far, sometimes you create holes in your, your position. Just as an example, like if I were to push this pawn here, and, I'm, and it's probably a good move, but you can see how holes have been created. Okay. And that's kind of what happens um, in chess when you push pawns too far. You create these holes, and then the other player will try to take advantage of that. Uh, yeah, but so this is definitely a, a game I, uh, I thought you guys would like in terms of me attacking, being aggressive, pushing forward, and the other player, Smash Define, um, just kind of defending and playing what's kind of called the hippopotamus um, structure with his pawns all back kind of on these squares um, very defensive waiting to strike kind of biding his time when he when it's his turn to uh, 
uh, attack me back, and then maybe the the game will kind of level level off. Um, but as you saw, I was only really um, I was plus one plus plus one point five. I was never I was honestly never behind in the game, but I was always ahead. But I wasn't as ahead as as much as you would think if you were to pass by a chessboard uh, somewhere in the park and see this kind of position as white, uh, you might think, well, white is just crushing here, but not necessarily. Chess is a very, very, uh, um, as I said, you know, chess is a, a very, very resilient game. And you can see how black was really putting up a fight by playing, um, by keeping his, his uh, pieces close to him and not really revealing what he wanted to do um, until I kind of showed him what I wanted my my plan first. Um, so yeah, that's the game, guys. So um, I hope you liked it. Um, I'll definitely provide um, deeper analysis in some other games. This was just kind of a quick overview of the game. Uh, the game was a um, I'll just call it an Austrian attack, uh, pseudo Austrian attack. But um, yeah, this is the kind of chess that I like to play as white. I like to play um attacking chess but also positional chess i'm not so much into defensive uh defensive structures uh so much um i'm more of an uh, attacking positional player and um i will definitely show you some of my opening uh repertoires that that i have come to know and and love and um yeah maybe you guys can enjoy them as well um but for now guys um thank you for um joining my channel and please comment and subscribe and remember, chess is for everyone and chess should be fun. So um, get out there, guys, and uh, play some chess. Take care.